Right, so welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the outer punch, the pre-count and the pre-roll from Studio One. Now, everything on this guide is in chapters. So if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now, if you like the guide, like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Everything is on the description. All right, so let's start with the pre-count. Why would even need a pre-count? Okay, so let's say I need to record something and I have to, uh, right here, I have a loop. This comes from the free kind of a package that you get from Studio One. So you can get it from there. So what I want to do, I want to record something and I have pigments right here. So if I play something with my MIDI keyboard, uh, I'm using the item skew, uh, I'm going to be getting something. So I want to record, so, and, but I want to record the bar five, six, seven, eight, and, and you know, all the way up to nine. I want to record four bars on this section. So this is what we want to do. So if you think about this, we can go right there at the bottom and we can start recording. And as soon as I do so, it's going to start recording right away. As soon as we click, it's going to fire, right? It's going to go. And this is, this is actual, you know, the actual problem. This is why we would uh, use a pre-count. As soon as I start record, it's going to start recording, recording. So I have no time to maybe go to my MIDI controller and start recording in time. And I'm using a control and I'm using the items queue. I have the rec button right next to the keyboard and I'm still struggling to kind of a start in time, right? So if, imagine if you uh, have to record something uh, that it's mi mic'd up like a guitar or maybe some vocals or something like that. So this is just not gonna work. So I'm gonna delete that clip and we are gonna be using the pre-count. Now the pre-count is all the way right here at the bottom. And the main purpose of this one is that this one is gonna do an initial count for us. So if we start right here, we put the cursor on the number five. This is where I want to start recording. The pre-count is going to use the metronome and it's going to do something like one, two, three, four and go. And then we can start recording. So that's what's going to go. So I'm going to enable this and this is disabled for now, but still it's going to play and do that one, two, three, four before we start recording. So now I need to put the cursor right here because this is where I want to record. And now I'm going to press the rec in three, two, one, record. Right. And that's it. So now what we were able is to start writing time because we get that one, two, three, four before we can start punching in. So that's the pre-count. Now, right now, by default, it's going to do it for one bar. It's going to one, two, three, four and go one single bar. Now, what if we wanted to alter this uh, bar? Maybe we wanted to, uh, for, for this, to, for the pre-count, to count for two bars or three or four bars. We can't change this. So if you go right there at the bottom, right next to the metronome right there, well, it's actually on the metronome. It says metronome settings, so, or setup. We need to go there and right there, it's gonna tell you, okay, the pre-count is gonna count for how many bars. And right now we have one. So we can do two, three, four, as much as you like. So in this case, I'm just gonna do two. So as soon as I close it, I'm gonna delete this section and I'm gonna start over. So now it's gonna do uh, two bars. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> And there you go. It's counting for two bars and then start. it starts to record the section. So that's it. That's why you would use a pre-count. It's very useful when you need to record something. So I'm going to be going right here at the bottom and you click it and you disable. And it's because right now we need to talk about the pre-roll. So what is the purpose of uh, the pre-roll? Now, the pre-count is fine, but we get no context. Now, the pre-roll gives us a context because it will play the whole track, one bar or maybe two bars before we can start, you know, we can punch in. That's the whole idea. That's what, how the pre-roll works. And let me just give you an example. I'm going to go right there. Make sure you have one bar. So I'm going to do one and just press enter. And I'm just going to get out of this and I'm going to enable the pre-roll. This is the pre-roll. If you enable, it's going to be red and you can enable or disable by doing the letter O on your keyboard. I'm going to put the cursor right here and I'm going to start recording. I'm not going to play anything, but you need to notice that the track, the whole track uh, will start playing one bar or two bars, depending on what we have on the configuration. If you go right there, it's going to say one bar. 
and we can change it of course we're gonna do it in a minute so for now it's just gonna do record and it's starting one bar before we start punching in so that's the whole point and if we do it it's just very useful and i'm gonna do it for two bars uh, let me just do two bars and then enter and then exit and i'm gonna put the course right here we're gonna start recording in three two one and now we have a context and we can easily you know where we want to start because we have the context and sometimes just the pre-count having no context is just an issue right because you just don't you just don't know where you are so this one is going to just kind of put you in the groove now what if you want a metronome at the same time you can enable this and right here you have the uh, levels for the metronome so you can go i'm going to go all the way up so we can really hear this you're still going to get the metronome but the, the metronome is global now i'm going to stand right here and just record we get the metronome right and it's doing the pre-roll and then we just can easily record the part right pretty simple all right so i believe that you get the idea how the pre-roll uh works and remember that you can just disable this and go right there and just shift the amount of bars uh that you want to do the pre-roll now the auto punch is a completely different animal now this one will listen to the uh, start and the ending of the loop bar it doesn't matter if it's enabled or it's disabled now i'm gonna need to disable this and i'm gonna go right there at the bottom and it says right there auto punch and it's the i one so if i do i it's gonna enable the auto punch and with my of course keyboard i'm just enabling and disabling so right now auto punch is on so again this means that the out punch will start recording whenever it sees the starting and ending of the uh, loop bar now i'm going to disable it's that right now it's disabled and it's because we have a a different uh, kind of function or it works a little bit different if we have the loop enable for now i'm going to keep it disabled and we're going to talk about how it works when we enable this so the main point is that now we can just uh, put ourselves i can put the cursor right here and start here or start here or start whatever we want let's say i want to start here right i'm going to record in three two one and we start from here but it's not recording and as soon as it reaches this section it's going to start recording now the whole point is that it will stop recording when this ends and when it ends it's just gonna stop recording right so that's the whole point now we didn't record anything so let's just do something i'm gonna go and do three two one record and notice that when it, this ends it will stop recording but the uh, but the playback is going to keep going and this is a pretty cool feature because maybe you're just recording something and you just want to record a tiny part and it's just going to start recording there and then it's going to keep going and moving forward so that is going to be this function the auto punch now what happens and i'm going to delete this what happens if we have the loop enable now i'm going to uh, place myself right here uh, two bars before and i'm going to enable the loop so now it's going to work a little bit different and remember i'm working on a midi track this works a little bit different on an audio track and we're going to talk about th that in one second for now i'm going to go to the midi track so i'm going to do a record in three two one so this is what it does when we loops we're going to start recording something and for now i'm just doing everything on a single octave all right i'm just play playing the same key so when it loops it's going to loop over the same thing and I'm playing a different octave right now. And it's gonna over, go over and over again. And if I play different keys, it's just gonna be overdubbing. It's just gonna record everything I'm doing. It's a little bit messy. So this is what the auto punch on, in this case, MIDI uh, is going to actually do. And just to give you a more complex example, you can really be really creative, especially when you work with MIDI. Let's say that you want to record the same take or just maybe record one take and then it's going to play it back when it goes back and you can record maybe a different key or a variation at some point. So you can use this for creative purposes. So I'm going to start with playing a low octave, right? I'm going to do something like that. Now, I'm going to record a different octave. So we are recording two takes and we're going to go to the third one. And at the end, 
we recorded uh, with three takes, just a lot, little bit more complex part, you know, with different different uh, MIDI notes. And you can do that, you know, re record maybe a chord at the bottom and then just record the melody at the top on, you know, just a split of a second. It's a really, really useful thing. So I'm going to be deleting this and just, you know, just going to delete it. I don't need it. Well, actually, you know, it, maybe it doesn't sound like it's that bad. Ah, uh, maybe I'm gonna leave this behind. I'm just gonna lower the volume. I'm gonna go to the MIDI, and you don't need to do this, of course. And I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna leave this one, maybe. So I'm gonna go right there, and I'm gonna go to here. This is an audio track. It's listening to some audio that is coming in right here. I'm gonna be using a synthesizer. I'm using a Hydra, if you wanted to know. So when I play the Hydra, I need to enable this. I'm gonna be... I'm going to be listening to that instrument that it's just connected to my interface. So now how is this going to work on, uh, you know, on an audio track? So it works very, very differently. I'm going to start right here, maybe right here, so we can have some time. And I'm going to be doing a record, enable this track to record something. And we have the auto punch and the loop enabled. So if I do something like this, I'm going to start recording. And now notice it's going to a second take. It's deleting what I have from before. So if I play something, and it goes to the third one. All right, so this is what it will do. Now you might, uh, you know, you might assume that uh, every take is disposing the previous one. And you are kind of a, Right, but not really. How this works uh, behind the scenes, it's recording takes by default. Now we are gonna be talking about that in a minute, but you know how the takes and the layers work at work uh, on, on Studio One. Uh, but right here, notice that we have an icon. So this is telling us that we took three different takes. And right now we are watching the take number three. Now, if I go there, it's gonna be the take number one, the take number two, or the take number three. So everything we did on the take when we were just using the auto punch is just being stored and saved in memory. So maybe if I wanted to use the take number one and play it back, it's gonna be playing, you know, the play, the take number one. What if I wanted to change it? Well, I'm gonna go to the number three and that's it. Now, it sounds like shit, but that's fine. Now, what you can do as well, if you don't like this behavior, you could just uh, do a right click. And if you go right here at the bottom, right here, it's gonna be select take, and you can select the takes from here, but you can also unpack the takes. And you have three different options and they are all different. So unpack takes to tracks is going to grab all the takes that we did and just kind of ship them to a track. So this is gonna be, you know, the uh, take number three, the take number one and the take number two. And it's telling you right there which take it is. Now, if I go back and do kind of, a, you know, go back to what we had and I go to the other options, is going to be a little bit different. This one is going to be uh, unpack takes to new layers. And now we are entering into the layers and the comping kind of a, a territory. So if I do something like this, now all this is going to be within this track, but now we have the layers. We, you know, we kind of uh, did, uh, converted this to comping. So how this works, if you don't know, I'm going to create a whole different guide about, you know, how this works. Just to, you know, just to show you on each different uh, section right here on each different layer, you can d duplicate or you can delete it or you can solo, uh, but you can maybe say, OK, so this take, the take number one is the one I want. Maybe the take number three is not the one I want. And it right now is the one that it's playing. So if I play it back, is this the take number three? I don't want this. So I want this as a main take. So now the take one is gonna be the top dock and everything else is just gonna be a layer that it's not gonna be played. But with layers, and it's something really cool on Studio One, is that you can just maybe select different parts from different clips. So let's say that maybe uh, this I, what I like is from the take one, I like this part, but maybe I like this part from the take number three. So as soon as you color this or you select this, now it's gonna be playing the take one on this part, the take three on this one, and maybe if I go to the take number two, uh, this one, it's going to be playing the take number two. 
So now we have a combination of, of, of uh, all the different takes. Now, again, we are entering into the comping and, you know, takes to layers and all that territory. I'm not going to be expanding this on this uh, on this guide. But uh, when you do this, when you go and do auto punch, uh, you need to be aware that it's going to be working a little bit different from MIDI and a little bit different from uh, audio. Now, still, I'm going to expand it just a little bit. What if we wanted to do what we just did? and uh, have this behavior, the layers. I don't want this. So uh, I'm gonna be deleting this and just kind of uh, select this. I'm gonna remove, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. So we have nothing. We are back to what we had from before. So if you go right here at the bottom, you have the configuration of the record panel. If you go there, you can have some options for the instruments. We're gonna talk about this in a second because we can record takes for MIDI. And then you have the record mode. And this one is the one it's gonna be working with audio. Now, if we want the default behavior of taking when we record, you know, like this, uh, take, uh, taking the audio or the takes to layers, we need to enable this. When we do this, it's going to do it by default. So if I go and do a record and I record something, it doesn't matter what. Now I'm gonna go an octave higher. I'm going to be stopping this and now we have two different takes and it's doing it by default. We don't need to do right click and then, you know, take this to a layer, just doing it by default. So if you want this behavior, you need to enable this. Now, then we have the replace mode and I'm not going to go and enter to this because this uh, it's something very specific. Uh, because let's say that we wanted to overlap audio and you can do it. You have an option right here, they, they, right here, uh, place overlaps. So we can do something like this, but I'm just going to cover on a different uh, video. Now I want to talk about a different thing. I'm going to close the layers. Now we have mm, the, the take one and the take two, you know, we still have it. And if you want and notice that I deleted this, so I kind of uh, erased all the layers. We can still go back and say, um, puck and pack takes two new layers and we have the same thing, right? We just, you know, we, we still have it, even though we just clicked on a remove layer. Now, if you want to close the layers because they are annoying, you can go right there and just close the layers. Now I like, you know what? I like the layer number, the, the take number one. So I'm going to be using the take number one. Now let's go back to here. So what if we wanted to do the same thing when we uh, do the, when we do the auto punch uh, with the MIDI? Right now we cannot do it. It's overdubbing. Now, remember right here at the bottom, you have the option. By default, the default behavior of MIDI is going to be record mix, which is very useful. And we can see that it's very useful, but maybe I just want to record takes whenever I do this. So I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna remove this, and I'm gonna stand on pigments, and I'm gonna be going right here. And now on the instrument loop record, I'm gonna record the takes. Notice that we cannot do both at the same time, of course. So I'm gonna be recording takes, and this works exactly the same way. I'm gonna be recording something, and now I'm playing uh, the pigments. I'm gonna be recording. And I'm doing a lower octave, and I'm the next one I'm gonna do a higher octave. And this is the higher octave. And I'm not doing, I'm just playing whatever, right? It's just to, so we can see the difference. Right. But notice it's just taking takes, uh, recording takes. So now this one is gonna be the take one, which is the lower, uh, the higher, you know, the octave. And this one is gonna be the lower octave. So we can decide, or maybe, make a combination of the lower and the higher. So now we can do takes with MIDI, which is something really great that not all DAWs can do. Right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna be recording a new video, a new tiny guide. It's gonna be just very small, explaining the replays and the uh, and right here, the play overlaps, uh, because I need a very specific example and I'm going off topic right now. So uh, remember, if you like this and if you learned something, remember to like then subscribe, right? So it's easy and it's free. So you will be helping the channel. So if you can do it, just do it. And if you have the money and you want to say thanks, you can buy me a coffee if you wish. Uh, the link uh, the description, you have links for PayPal, you have Patreon, you can be a one month patron, or you have the Google Thanks now. All right, so see you on the next one.